Okay, everyone, uh, welcome. Uh, hello from UNESCO. Uh, I'm very happy to start this last webinar on education for sustainable development in our series of six webinars on ESD. Today we're discussing uh, the time to act for education for sustainable development, the future direction for uh, ESD. Um, my name is Alexander Leicht. I'm the chief of section of education for sustainable development at uh, UNESCO. And I will start by just uh, handing over the floor to um, the director of our division, Ms. Wiebeke Jensen, director um, for peace and sustainable development in UNESCO's education sector, who will welcome you and introduce the webinar. Wiebeke, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, Alexander. And uh, let me first say uh, good afternoon and good morning, good evening, everyone, and a very warm welcome to all of you to this final workshop uh, in our series on transformative power of education for sustainable development for a world beyond COVID-19. This series of online events uh, that we are now ending today was actually conceived as a way to continue global discussion on ESD, as we were forced to delay the World Conference on Education for Sustainable Development that should have been held last year, early June in Berlin. Of course, we were hoping that by delaying the conference by a year, we would have been able to meet next month face-to-face uh, -face in Berlin. But unfortunately, this is not the case. But one thing, very positive thing that we have learned over the past year is the ease in which we now come together online and in a way make events and conversations much more inclusive. This series is a very good example of that. Actually over the last uh, six uh, webinars, we have had over 15,000 people, participants joining us throughout. Um, and that's quite impressive, and we would never have been able to achieve that had we had face-to-face -face, uh, meetings. And in each event, we, had, we have been looking at different themes of ESD. This final workshop will be an interactive session with some of the participants from the past six webinars, joining to discuss how we can put into practice these discussions under the new ESD for 2030 framework. So let me just start by saying a few words about the framework in which we, you, all have an important role to play. The ESD 2030 uh, is a global framework um, for ESD for the next nine to 10 years. And it provides a roadmap for governments, education stakeholders, civil society, and learners of all ages to determine the goals of learning for the purpose of societal transformation. The ultimate ESD 2030 goal is, of course, to build a more just and sustainable world through education. And we all know change is needed. We must learn to live together sustainably. And for a better world, we must also learn caring for our planet. And this requires change of thinking, change of behavior, and change of action, which is not achievable, achievable without education. ESD, when well done, gives learners the tools, the knowledge, values, and attitudes to act for sustainability, and hence is an enabler for all 17 sustainable development goals. With the new framework, we aim to fully integrate ESD and the sustainable development goals into policies, learning environments, capacity building of educators, the empowerment and mobilization of young people, and local level action. But ESD doesn't only promote learning on, on the important topics in the, uh, that the goal address. It also promotes a critical and contextualized understanding of the SDGs, which invites the learners to see the interlinkages and potential tensions between the goals in their local, national, and regional context. We know that societal transformation is needed to address the interconnected challenges we face climate change, severe loss of biodiversity, extreme inequality, and the threat of future pandemics. This transformation starts with education, which is why transformation is at the heart of ESD for 2030. The framework promotes, promotes lifelong learning, which is transformational and holistic. 
Individual actions are intertwined with structural changes that aims to transform the deep causes of the crisis we face. It empowers people to transform themselves and most importantly, to take action to transform the world. UNESCO aims to do this through mobilization in five priority action areas. And these are derived from the Global Action Program on ESD, which ran from 2015 to 2019. Because of their proven success in integrating ESD at all levels, from top down through policy learning institutions and educators, from bottom up through learners and youth, and all around in communities and in cities. Through ESD for 2030's priority action areas, UNESCO's aim is that by 2030, we will live in a world where one, governments have transformed education policies and frameworks to help learners achieve the sustainable development goals through ESD. Two, learners from all walks of the life across the world have opportunities to acquire the knowledge, skills, values, and attitudes needed for promoting sustainable development. And thirdly, educators across the world have the opportunities to develop capacities to foster societal transformation for a sustainable future. Fourthly, use are empowered to be agents of change and use organizations systematically provide training for use and use trainers and ESD. And finally, People living in cities, in rural areas, and communities across the world recognize ESD as a key instrument and lifelong learning opportunity to achieve sustainability at local level. To succeed, we need to, we, we need to think global, but we need to act locally and nationally. And as part of ESD for 2030, every UNESCO member state is being invited to create a country initiative. These initiatives should build on ongoing efforts in ESD, as well as possibly creating new programs and activities. And the aim of the ESD for 2030 country initiatives is that every government is creating a network of actors within their country who are interested or active in implementing ESD. They may be policymakers, they may be teachers, civil society, youth, corporate, academic and learners of all ages. And these, these networks will build a plan of action for each member state to achieve the vision of 2030 uh, that this framework ambitiously endorses. We'll be launching these country initiatives at the World Conference on Education for Sustainable Development next month uh, in Berlin. And um, the conference, as you know, is now being held virtually. Um, uh, there's a platform for urgent, which is providing a platform for urgent global commitment to EESD for 2030 and for the promotion of transformative education and for international expert conversations on the future of education for people and the planet. And we want you to be involved and we invite all of you to stream open sessions of the conference and follow online. But we also invite you to be part of calling for change, to let policymakers know that we, the people, want that vision of 2030 offered in this framework. We'll be asking people around the world to post their demands for change of education with hashtag learn for our planet. We know people want to learn for our planet, about our planet and from our planet, for the future of our planet. Share your ideas on how education can teach to be sustainable with learn for our planet. Your demands and your good examples. And in turn, we will do our very best to ensure that the world is listening in May. I'd like to again thank you all for joining us in this important series. With each event, our confidence in the strengths of, ESD, of the ESD community has grown. We know that together we'll transform education and transform the world. I look forward to seeing you all in Berlin virtually, and I thank the German government for their partnership in organizing this world conference. Thank you, and over to you, Alexander. 
Great, thank you very much, uh, Wiebeke, for, for framing the, the discussion and, and reminding us of the priorities and also of the, of the high ambitions, really, of this uh, new ESD for 2030 framework that we, are, uh, that, that we have now. Uh, and of course, as you, as you also explained, the focus really of the workshop today is, is how to put it into action, how to put ESD into action, how to implement the ESD for 2030 uh, framework. Uh, we have invited five panelists, uh, five very distinguished panelists from uh, all world regions, um, which uh, who also participated in, in earlier workshops of this uh, series. So they will help also pull together some conclusions overall uh, from the workshop. Before we, um, uh, before we introduce the panelists and before we go into our discussion, uh, I wanted to again introduce the uh, online tool that we will be using like on, on similar occasions, we're using a little online tool to uh, make it possible also for, for participants all across the world to, uh, to raise their voices and give their views on the, on the workshop um, uh, discussions. And this is the, the Slido tool that maybe you're, you're familiar with. Uh, and uh, we wanted to just uh, briefly introduce it and do a little test run uh, with this tool. So I invite you to, uh, to open your, the browsers in your, in your smartphone, in your mobile phone, um, or on your laptop, and then uh, type uh, uh, slido.com. I think we're putting also uh, the relevant information in the, in the chat. So slido.com. Uh, uh, and there you can put uh, uh, the code, uh, the code, the event code, and the code is 584038. Uh, we have put it also, I think, in the, in the chat, 584038. And there you can see a little uh, test question. And I would invite you to, um, to sort of try out this test question uh, about how you're feeling today. And as you can see, we're very optimistic people. So we give, give you only very uh, positive options, uh, motivated, hopeful, or happy. So I can see a couple of people are trying this out already. I'm just uh, waiting for a little moment um, for everyone to, to try this out. Okay, so we're going towards uh, 200 participants who are already trying out the tool. So this is basically the tool that we are using throughout the, the, the coming uh, 60, 70 minutes to, you know, to, to, to enable some, uh, some interaction. Uh, if you have any questions during the, the workshop, any specific questions uh, during the workshop, then please put them into the Q&A um, &A function. Uh, some questions we can already answer immediately then in the Q&A function uh, on other ones we will get back to you um, uh, later, la later on. Uh, I would also like to announce uh, before going into the discussion that we have a live illustrator. Uh, thanks to the German Commission for UNESCO, Ms. Uh, Anja Riese, who will, um, who will summarize our discussions uh, in, a, in, in, in some drawings, which will be then presented at the end of the, at the, end of the uh, workshop. Um, so with this, I would like to introduce the five panelists that we have uh, today. Um, uh, Mr. Christian Vélez Ramírez, uh, the General Coordinator of Environmental Education at the Amazon Rescue Center in Peru. Then I go on to Mr. Isaac Marquinha, uh, member of Global Youth Representatives of the World Scouting and, and a member of the National Youth Forum Committee in Kenya. Uh, great to have you here, Mr. Zituni Uldada, Deputy Director Office for Climate Change, Biodiversity and Environment of FAO, our, our sister UN agency, FAO. Uh, Ms. Mena Mospa, uh, youth activist, uh, and um, from the, and she's also participating in the Arab region ESD uh, Youth Network. And then the fifth panelist, uh, Ms. Kathleen Usher, uh, science specialist uh, from the English Montreal School Board in. Canada. So it's great to have you all, uh, have you all uh, here. Uh, as I said, the overarching question will be really to uh, how to put ESD into practice, how to implement uh, the new ESD for 2030 uh, framework. And in order to start the discussion about this, um, we propose to, uh, to first uh, go, go to, a, uh, to a first audience question in Slido. Uh, so we're using this tool now, uh, slido.com 
with the um, with the code that you have uh, uh, can see on the screen, also five eight four zero three eight, and we invite you to um, to answer the question here: What is the what is the most most urgent global challenge for ESD to address? And you can pick two uh, two challenges. So I, I invite you to uh, to try this out, and I will make, uh, wait, wait just a little moment for for everyone to have a chance to to respond here. Just giving a few more seconds. Okay, I think we have a good number of uh, of responses now, and 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 uh, the picture, as you can see on the on the screen, is with with climate change clearly identified as the as the most urban uh, uh, most urgent global challenge for ESD to respond to, uh, followed by poverty and inequality, uh, green economies, and sustainable production and consumption. Uh, biodiversity, health and resilience, and then technology, technological issues. So climate change and, and poverty and inequality uh, at the at the top. And I would like now to turn to uh, to our panelists um, and really uh, invite your responses and your observations and your comments. Um, do you agree with this assessment? Um, what maybe would you see? Would you see differently? Are you surprised in any way? And I'm going to start with with Christian from from Peru. Christian. Hello, Alexander. Hello, everyone. Thank you for inviting me. It's an honor to be part of, of the panelists and also to have the opportunity like to interact virtually with other people from all around the world. Well, regarding to the question, well, I think it, it doesn't surprise me that uh, climate challenge is, is cli climate uh, is uh, that first one. But for me, I think um, maybe I would as the first one, I would choose uh, um, poverty and inequality, I think, because um, this is always a discussion that we have with my, my friends, you know, is like uh, why sustainable means, still means expensive. It's not fair. Sustainable, uh, I think that there is a huge gap that we have to bridge. Uh, at least here in Peru, in the Amazon, there is a huge gap uh, regarding to poverty. Um, and unfortunately, sustainable is not affordable for everyone. If you want to get sustainable products, sustainable things, and poverty makes you have another priorities, you know? And that's why I think that, we, that is, a, for me, is the most important and also uh, biodiversity. I work in biodiversity conservation. I work in uh, Amazonian fauna conservation. I know how important it is that we have to keep uh, the, uh, um, a healthy ecosystem for people to have a sustainable livelihood. People here in the Amazon need the biodiversity to, to meet the, their needs, to get food, to build their houses. They need the biodiversity, it's important at least for, for the villages, at least for people here in, in the Peruvian Amazon. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christian, for these, for these initial thoughtful observations. Let me turn to, to Isaac from, from Kenya. What's, what's your response to this, to this little poll and your observations? Thank you very much, uh, Alexander, and I'm glad to join you today. Uh, first, I'm not surprised by the responses from our participants, and I joined them. Uh, in stating that climate change is one of the biggest uh, challenges that needs to be addressed as soon as now, because climate change requires quick action and transitions in all uh, aspects of our societies. Uh, human activities have brought about unpredictable weather conditions and weather patterns, which uh, generally have affected the whole ecosystem and even human security. Uh, for example, if you look at the health and productivity of the existing land that we have now, 
it's declining at the moment and it's due to climatic uh, changes. And what does this, does this mean? This means that our land will not be able to sustain our 7.9 billion people in the world. Yeah, so their needs are not going to be met fully. And all these uh, climatic changes and uh, uh, yeah, the changes, they are human induced. And therefore meaning we can educate uh, these human beings so that they get to change their behaviors and habits. And uh, therefore, just like I said, education is an essential tool uh, in the global response for climatic change. And also it will, help, it will help these young people understand and address uh, the impact of climatic changes. It will also encourage changes uh, in terms of attitudes, in terms of behavior, and also help them adopt uh, climate change related uh, trends. Uh, the other thing is biodiversity, because I know they go hand in hand. Climate change affects biodiversity. Uh, and this is because when climate is not so conducive, then you are likely to lose some of the species uh, on Earth. And therefore, this means that we are not going to have a functioning ecosystem, uh, or rather, we are not going to have a, a ecological life support. Therefore, I feel like climate change and biodiversity are the main issues that needs to be addressed by education for sustainable development uh, at the moment. Great. Okay, great, great. Uh, thank, thank you very much, uh, Isaac, for your observations and your uh, prioritization. Uh, Zituni, let me, let me move, move to you and invite your, your observations and responses. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you for the invitation and hello, everyone. Uh, that's an interesting poll, actually, and, and I'd like to, to approach it from two perspectives. One perspective for which uh, it doesn't surprise me, uh, and the second perspective, um, it, it is a surprise in, in a different sense. So let me explain. Um, on the first aspect, it's normal that people are aware of the impact of climate change and, and uh, the loss of biodiversity and other aspects that were highlighted that we, in relation to, to health, etc. So that's fine. But on the other aspect, um, I am surprised and also I, I disagree with that because the world doesn't operate in, in isolation. Um, you know, climate change is not the only challenge, of course, that is facing humanity. Uh, and the world is interconnected. If we look at the, the atmosphere, the environment, natural resources, animal health, people, we're all interconnected and we're all in the same planet. And what happens in one area affects the other one. And this is particularly important because when we're talking about education for sustainable development, is education about what? You know, it, maybe people know more about climate change than uh, food loss and waste. Maybe people know more about the loss of biodiversity than, um, you know, uh, the, the, the challenges facing women in rural areas, for instance. So education really is, is, is context specific. Uh, so the point I want to make is we need to look at things in synergy. We need to look at things in the, the global context. So it's okay to, 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 to use this kind of question to, to, to get people what they think about challenges and how they can rank them. But in my opinion, we can't rank them in that order without saying actually they are connected, they affect each other. Uh, if you take the example of climate change, yeah, if we don't fix the problem of climate change, we won't be able to achieve any of the SDGs, including education. Okay, so you can pick anyone and see how they interconnect with the others. And, and that means also that we have to be so, so, so careful about trade offs. If we just look at climate change, okay, let's fix climate change and you fix it in isolation and you affect so many other areas and sectors and people and you create problems elsewhere. So we have to look at them in, in connection into one uh, synergy so that we don't end up with these trade-offs, fix a problem here and end up with problems somewhere else. So I'll stop it here, thank you.
Great. No, so thank you very much for these for these observations. Uh, a big task for education, of course, to to really provide the skills to make to make these connections and also the the necessary knowledge. Let me move on to to Mena and ask for her her observations and comments. Mena, please. Hello. Thank you, Alexander, and hello everyone from Egypt. Um, well, th first of all, thank you uh, for the UNESCO. Big thanks, actually, for open this virtual opportunity to interact with other peers. Uh, though I'm surprised that people picked technology as or voted for the technology as uh, the last choice. Um, however, I agree with those who um, have selected green economies and sustainable production and consumption. In fact, I believe that both of these challenges are helping in finding global solutions for the other mentioned challenges. As for the technology we all experiencing now, the very important role that the technology is playing during COVID-19, whether in collecting and analyzing the huge amount of data and information or the role that is the technology playing in remote jobs and education, which is 100% now depending on the use of the technological tools, especially during the lockdown. Um, paying attention that we have to adapt to this big technology change because technological tools are rapidly updated, developed, and even quickly replaced nowadays with other more innovative and effective tools to suit the specific needs of the end users. On the other hand, I believe that the green economies, uh, especially empowering people through STEM educational programs like we do in our, my organization, especially targeting youth, is one of the ESG's main theories of a change to reduce poverty and inequalities. As we can see nowadays, how youth are creating green startups to find concrete sustainable solutions for their community-based needs. Great, thank you very much. I mean, an excellent example of, of bringing together these different these different priorities really in one concrete intervention. Uh, Kathleen, let me move on to you and, and invite your comments. Well, thanks very much, Alexander, and thanks for having me. It's nice to be here from Montreal, Canada. I think that um, as Zituni was mentioning, it's uh, it, everything is so interconnected that it's hard to um, really target one thing. But the question, as far as I understood it, was, uh, so sorry, was what, um, which area is better addressed in ESD? And it's true that climate change as a teacher, as an educator, uh, climate change resources for teachers have really um, been quite successfully rolled out. And so I think that that has been quite successful in terms of uh, breadth, but not depth. And what we are seeing globally is this intersectionality among all kinds of structural inequalities. And um, unfortunately, the optimism that I felt in April 2020, as we were designing Earth School and the whole world was coming together around this sudden pause in in-person education around the world, and there was this idea that, wow, you know, we're going to build back better. I realized that until we recognize the huge discrepancies, the huge inequalities, um, we're never going to get there. I really, uh, I really appreciated what, um, I'm sorry, I'm just looking for names here. It's quite early in the morning in Montreal. I'll just put that in as my defense. Um, Christian. So Christian, you mentioned right off the top something so important that sustainable options are still out of reach for almost everyone in many parts of the world, including a wealthy country like Canada. And this is this is a, a reality that we're that we're facing today uh, still. And so I think that those structural inequalities, the the poverty, the access to education, all of this is um, really important. And it's important that we develop better educational tools for, especially in higher education for teacher training that help us focus on the intersectionality of the global issues, the global uh, environmental issues and the global equity issues. So thank you so much. 
Great. No, thank, thank you, Kathleen. Also a strong plea for, for seeing the interconnections and really sort of how all these different challenges are, 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 are inter, interlinked. Actually, if you, you've anticipated a little bit uh, our second question already. We have a separate poll question, and I would like to turn to that one uh, now for, for our next round of discussion about um, uh, of all these different challenges that we've looked at now, uh, which topic is, is, is better addressed by Education for Sustainable Development or has been better addressed by by ESD uh, so far. So I would uh, again invite participants to go to the to the slido.com um, page uh, with the code 584038 and then and then vote for which areas do you think have been better addressed than others and you are able to 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 do a little ranking here from one to six. Again, I'm going to wait a, a few moments. So we can see climate change on on top, a bit in line with what what Kathleen has said that you know a lot of good good activities have been happening in ESD specifically with regard to to climate change, uh, biodiversity and green economies and sustainable production consumption. Uh, second. Um, Poverty and inequality, which was really uh, the, the the second top priority in terms of what are the key challenges, uh, not so well addressed here, uh, and then followed by health and and by by technology. Um, and I would like to use this poll again, uh, you know, just as a as a kind of conversation starter with another for another panel round uh, and invite your observations about this uh, about this poll um, and uh, I will change the order a little bit uh, uh, and I would like to ask uh, Mena to go to go first and and maybe give give your reactions to this um, to this poll in terms of what has ESD done well in terms of addressing well thank you Alexander can you just um See what happened to the screen of uh, the poll voting because it doesn't appear for me. I think I have lost it. Okay, I believe uh, the first choice was climate change. So I believe that it is right. The UNESCO is addressing the climate change cons uh, in a very well uh, and uh, organized way, uh, especially organized the international, regional and national levels. Uh, through uh, the focal point offices, through the actors that are implementing differences on the ground. Um, I believe that uh, the UNESCO is making tremendous efforts for uh, organizing a platform and open it for all uh, youth activists uh, across different regions in the world uh, to uh, try um, uniting uh, the vision of uh, the youth uh, towards finding the global and regional solutions for climate change. Um, I do believe uh, that uh, the Paris Agreement uh, COP25, uh, I, I believe it was organized last year. I don't know what about this year, if it is going to happen or it's going to be organized virtually. And also uh, the conference that we referred to uh, from 17 to 19 May, these international and global efforts are tremendously great because it brings on board everyone, brings youth, brings different actors. And the most important thing that we will have the chance to be engaged in close with the stakeholders in trying to uh, find a safe exit for everyone. Great, okay, no, so thank, thank, thank you very much, uh, Mena. Uh, let me move on to, uh, to, to, to Christian. Uh, I think you had made the case also for the, for the inequality issue at the, the beginning and, and, uh, uh, and we can see it here as, as not very well ranked in terms of how ESD has been doing. Christian, I invite your, your comments on that. Yeah, thank you. Yes, definitely, I agree with this poll. I think climate change is probably the, the better addressed um, issue by the ESD, uh, maybe because it affects us all. You know, you can see the impact of climate change in Egypt, you can see in the Amazon. I mean, it's something that affects us all. And I think that something that is very helpful for this is also that we have 
faces. We have uh, activists that are working on this or are addressing this huge issue. But I, I definitely agree with what uh, Mr. C. Tony said that we have to see this not only as isolated issues, but we have to see the, the whole um, the whole thing here. Um, we have to looking for synergies. We have to looking for um, to try to face problems, but together. You know, um, it's very very important for me. What I said that the poverty and inequality. Uh, well, it, here it's ranking in number four, but I think that climate change is is okay the, the way that we have been working for for many years, but it's I think it's also time to look at the other huge challenges that we have as a society. And as as Mena said, for instance, technology technology has helped us a lot during this pandemic time. So I I think that it may be time to look in, to look. Uh, farther than our space, than our comfort zone, maybe, and to see the different uh, the different challenges that we have. Great, thank thank you very much, uh, Christian, for the for the for these observations. Let me move on to to Zituni and then invite again your your responses to this little poll. Uh, thank you. Um, this is another interesting question, and and it's good to see how the responses um, spread across the different areas. Um, and I think this raises also another important point with regard to education for sustainable development, which is what are the factors that are reinforcing education? So education is one means of raising awareness of these issues here amongst people. Uh, of all ages, but there are reinforcing factors. Um, take the example of climate change. There is uh, education curriculum about climate change in, in many parts of the world, but people also hear more about climate change in the media coverage, in, in other means of communication. And also there are many parts of the world now who experience the impact of climate change. So, so the point I want to make is um, education is absolutely critical and it needs to be reinforced by other factors as well. So we need to look at um, all the forms of education. Uh, and, and I think if you look at, at, at different age groups, and in different parts of the world, uh, unfortunately, there are many people around the world who were not lucky enough to go and get education and learn about things. So how would we make them aware of certain issues that matter to them and issues where we want them to, to take care, to take action? And... If you, if, you, if you go to school and learn about th these things, that's one form of education. But I think we need to look at it beyond just being at school. In my opinion, education expands beyond school as well. So you can reach everyone. As I said, there are people who, who can't go to school. They need to learn in a different way. And there are many parts of the world, particularly in developing countries, obviously in remote areas and, and where vulnerable communities live where they don't have access to different means of education to learn about all these issues. And then you take people in different professions as well, where they, they don't have the means of having this education. So the point I'm making here is that what this highlights is, is we need to look at all forms of education really to, to reach everyone. Thank you. Right. Great. Okay. Great. Uh, thank you very much. We we have in our next question, we will indeed talk a little bit about prioritization in terms of education, education sector. I think uh, uh, very interesting points already that you have raised. Let me move on to, to Kathleen and invite her, her quick comments on, on, on this poll. Kathleen? 
Well, uh, thank you. And I, I think this is what I was addressing in the last uh, round, so I won't take up very much time here. But really, I think it's it is all about um, it's all about helping learners make connections. And uh, I, you know, in terms of, of what is currently better addressed, it's true that things that you experience yourself and things that you hear about later on, as well as things that you are learning about simultaneously, will lead you to a place where you have that wonderful coming together of information and experience. And that's where knowledge sets in. And that's that magic spot between information and experience that um, is what is often missing in our educational strategies. And so I think that the fact that we are now able to make a direct connection, for instance, between the technology we use and the shortage of rare earth minerals and shipping issues um, is an interesting component of this. Our world has become much smaller in the last year. And uh, that has been, that has had ramifications across every sector, um, certainly in education for sure. So our world is smaller, it is more fragile. Um, we need to continue to make those connections, make it real um, and work with the head, the heart and the hands. And this is uh, again, underlining that word experience in a time of virtual learning, in a time of disconnection, we need to find that reconnection. So I think I'll pass it on now, thank you. Great, thank, thank you very much, uh, uh, Kathleen. Let me move on to, to Isaac and then invite your responses to this, um, uh, to this ranking here in, in terms of how ESD has been doing. Thank you very much, Alexander. And I think the only way you're going to measure the impact of education for sustainable development is when we see a change in behavior and action uh, among our people. And because basically education shapes uh, uh, our thinking. So we have uh, new ways of uh, seeing things. And I share the sentiments of our uh, participants uh, that climate change has been well addressed by ESD because we are seeing so many people coming together to address uh, climate change. We are seeing so many people planting trees, uh, trying to eradicate single-use plastics and so many other things. And just like uh, my colleagues have just said, I think it's because it directly affects uh, our people. And that's why they have to take it up uh, to tackle the issue. And again, if you go even to the website for UNESCO and so many sites, you'll see lots of uh, best practices showing what people are doing out there to respond to these uh, issues. And again, uh, Mena mentioned something on technology. And I believe it could be one thing that is maybe making some people not get the information, uh, especially people from formal settlements, people from poverty-stricken areas and such. So I guess uh, if our technology was improved, then I think uh, people will get the information very well and they will be able to take action. Uh, but for now, I think uh, climate change awareness has been well created and the response and the mitigation measures are being taken uh, for now. And then, of course, the issue of poverty and inequality. Uh, I can say I can also rank it uh, top because uh, awareness has been improved uh, because people have been more keen on understanding what are the causes, what are the effects, and also what is their role in mitigating this issue of poverty and inequality. Great, thank, thank, thank you very much, uh, uh, Isaac. Uh, I think the comments that have been made already in terms of where, where which areas of, of learning uh, education for sustainable development needs to be active, we will address them in our next round uh, in, the, in the panel and with our next uh, little poll question that we can show now. And that would be uh, the question, um, you, you, you remember that in the ESD for 2030 framework, and you have heard it also uh, from, from Vibeke at the beginning, that there are five priority action areas that were identified through our consultations, uh, policies, learning environments, um, uh, teachers, youth, and local communities. And the question here now is, uh, where should ESD invest more? in order to generate societal transformation. So that's a little poll about sort of the areas of ESD to prioritize and to scale up.
So we can see clearly teacher education here very much on, on top. Local level action second at the moment. Yeah, I think maybe while while the last couple of people are still putting in their their results, um, I'll turn again to uh, to our panel today uh, and invite your responses to this prioritization in terms of what needs to be, uh, where do we need to invest more in, in order to generate societal transformation, teachers, policies, and local level action. Second, um, uh, teachers uh, uh, on the top, and let me let me start with Kathleen and invite your. Uh, your responses and observations, and, and and also if you if you agree or not, Kathleen. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Um, yeah, I certainly do agree. Uh, today, this will mark my thirtieth year working in environmental education in Canada, and after thirty years, you would imagine that with all of the great tools out there, that we would have a very solid sustainable uh, development education uh, plan or course or program in all of our teacher training course, you know, programs in all of our universities. And I hate to tell you that not one exists. Uh, we have small certificate programs in environmental education that a teacher um, uh, in training can uh, can take as well as a, as well as an education degree, but we are really sorely lacking in professional development um, for teachers as well as teachers in training. The whole idea of transformative change comes from this this idea of putting schema and tools together and resources together in different ways to enact change. I mean that's agency, and how do you develop um, a kind of fertile ground for agentic uh, thinking and agentic teaching and agentic um, behaviors when our own policies and our own frameworks for uh, teacher training that exist here, and I think pretty much mirrored around the world, do not provide for that. They provide standardized structures. They provide um, top-down um, kinds of uh, interventions. Um, the other thing that occurs is we never address the fact that uh, the educational model we're using today is the same <laughs> educational model we've been using for 200 years and uh, things really do need to change. Um, really at a, at a very basic structural level. And so, yes, indeed, I feel I was torn. I had a very hard time making my choices in this particular poll because without the change in policy, then <laughs> how do you get the others? So I'm not sure where to invest. I want to support our youth. So many of our programs that supported youth action have fallen by the wayside during this year of pandemic and virtual learning. And we have to we have to breathe new life into these organizations that have always partnered with us as teachers and uh, provided such great opportunities for our youth. And they really need that more than ever right now. So thank you very much. Great, thank you very much, uh, Kathleen. Also reminding us of the really fundamental change within education that is still that is still necessary, uh, really. Um, Isaac, let me turn to you and then invite your your observations. Thank you very much. And uh, for this case, I think uh, I might share a different opinion from the participants because I believe that empowering and mobilizing youth uh, is the best way to go. Because this is uh, a sleeping force that has not been well tapped uh, in our communities. Because even looking at uh, uh, one of these uh, saying that uh, influencing local action, uh, uh, the young people are the same same people who are taking action in their local communities. And you can see through the youth-driven uh, projects that are taking place now, they are so impactful, meaning that if we empower them more and give them more resources, then we'll get to see uh, a, a bigger impact. These young people are visibly contributing uh, in their societies in terms of uh, their political actors, their peace builders, their innovators, uh, businesses, entrepreneurs, and so many other ways. At the same, same time, these are this, the young people who are 
being uh, who have who have uh, social, economic, and political barriers, which are preventing them from achieving their full potential. Therefore, investing in young people and also involving them, empowering them, and coming up with policies that uh, support their participation at all levels will be a great way of utilizing their potential as agents of change. And again, let's engage uh, these young people at an early age. Let them sit on the same table with those uh, policymakers so that when their time comes to take up those positions of policymakers, they'll be talking from a point of knowledge and experience. Yeah, so I go for supporting uh, youth and, and mobilization. Great. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Isaac, because of course also youth, uh, as you explained, sort of has, has, an, has an impact on all the other action areas, in particular uh, policy through the pressure that is also generated from, uh, from young people. Uh, Mena, let me move on to, to you and invite your, your comments. I believe all the investments are very important. I cannot arrange uh, uh, one more important than the other. Uh, and I do agree with Catalan and uh, uh, Isaac that empowering and mobilizing youth, this is a huge investment, investment in humans. And this is uh, a great sustainable investment as we must empower, mobilize and emphasize the leadership of women and youth in improving the ecosystem of green economies and jobs. Also to leverage the concept of leaving no one behind. And I believe that youth have been adapting this concept for a very long time. We need to ensure and widen that inclusivity is a main concept in standing against gender climate inequalities. Another um, investment that I believe it's really important is the policies and um, uh, the education itself. I believe it was mainstreaming ASD in education and sustainable development policies. Uh, as much as we need to empower youth, we need also to emphasize the importance of integrating the concept of education on SDGs in the formal educational systems and school infrastructures. Also, we need to adopt more national and regional action plans, strategies, and policies that could act as roadmaps for countries and regions towards accelerating and uniting the efforts for achieving the sustainable development goals of Agenda 2030. Great. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Amina, for, for your observations. I'll move on to, to Christian and invite your comments. Thank you, Alexander. Uh, yes, it's very hard to to rank uh, to rank these because I think all of them are important. But I I completely agree with what Mrs. Casey said. I think uh, um, investing in training educators is very it's very important. I think I think teachers and educators have such a very very important role in the development of a person, of a child. And we, we need to invest in them. I think that by investing in uh, training educators, uh, you are investing also in children at the same time, you know, uh, because the impact of, of uh, a teacher in the, chi in the child's life could be very, very um, powerful. And I, I also think that Youth uh, support the uh, um, supporting the youth is very important as well because we have realized that youth are um, a powerful uh, youth are powerful change makers. <laughs> they can even change the policy policies in in a country. You know the youth movement is it's very very powerful. But also, I think that it's very important supporting the local actions. Sometimes we, we always say, yes, use, use is very important, but also the elders are very important. And I think that, for instance, at least here in the rural areas, in the Amazon, in the villages, in the communities, um, usually the elder people are the ones that have the knowledge, you know, half of this this wise that we need to, to, um, to know, we need to recover, we don't have to lose that. And I think that by supporting local action, we are helping them, you know, because mainly sometimes the local actions are led by elder people. So I think it's important to have different perspectives about it. 
but definitely I I would say that teachers are the are key components in this ESD process. Great, great. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Christian. Zetuni, you, you, you made some comments earlier on already, sort of in terms of like what kind of areas of education and learning are, are important. I, I invite you to, uh, to briefly elaborate on, on that. Uh, uh, over to you. Yeah, thank you. Just, just a couple of additional points. Um, the, the, the ranking here for, for the investment, um, you can see apart from ESD in training educators, the rest is more or less close, actually. So what I would say is we need to invest in everything, all these points and more, um, because they, they are all important, of course. You can invest in less in some than, than others. And in some contexts, I think you probably need to, to, to realize that investment need to to be made more in some areas to catch up with, with others. Um, the investing in, in uh, ESD uh, in, in this way need to also be um, aligned with investment in other areas that are facing the communities. For example, investment in, in health, in employment, in, 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 in um, environmental protection, etc. So it has to be seen in, in, in that context. And also the investment has also in, in education has also to be um, covering the wider spectrum of thinking about investment in, in, in individu individuals, communities, but also the national level. And the, the, the last point I want to make is with regard to investing in other aspects of education as well. Um, two things that come to mind. The first is based on the experience the world has been facing with the pandemic that brings into question investment in digital technology uh, as a means of education, as a means of, of reaching people and, and keeping the communication and education going. Of course, this raises so many challenges in investment because not everyone has access to digital technology across the world, not just in developing countries, but in developed countries as well. There are many people who are not connected to the internet and therefore have suffered from this. So this is again a big gap that we need to invest in if we want education to reach everyone. And the second and last point I want to make is with regard to um, investing, as I was saying earlier, that the means of, of, of education. And here I want to highlight the importance of indigenous knowledge, the traditional knowledge. That there are many communities, as I was saying earlier, who don't have access to school, don't have access to means of education, but they have a knowledge that has been transferred from generation to generation. And they use that knowledge to, to adapt, to innovate, to, to learn more on how to, to cope with local challenges and circumstances. So I really want to stress that point, because when we talk about education, it's on, not only about school and learning new things and new disciplines, but the education is, is across communities and generations. And there are people who have their own means of education and educating their communities. And again, as I said, transferring this from one community, one generation to another. So traditional knowledge, indigenous knowledge is absolutely critical and has to be part of this social transformation that we're aiming for. Thank you. Great. Great. Thank, thank you very much. I think that's uh, also very, very, uh, very important comments and also a little bit of reminder that, you know, within such a poll, you can only sort of picture so much, you know, and there are many important areas that are maybe not reflected also in the in the er earlier poll themes. So I think here in particular, indigenous knowledge, I think a very, very important uh, point. And I think I heard from the panel also a very strong plea uh, with regard to considering sort of the interlinkages, not only in the earlier question of the different themes and challenges, but also here the interlinkages between the different areas of the education uh, system uh, and really how, how sort of policies influences teachers and youth influences influence policies and, and to see it really in a, in a very holistic way, our implementation. Um, time is flying, but I do want to do like one, one, last, uh, one last little poll.
Uh, that will be a very quick one, uh, but hopefully interesting one. And that will be a little word cloud. Uh, you, you know that uh, in a few weeks only, uh, thanks to the German government and the, to the German Commission for UNESCO, we are able to organize the World Conference on ESD. Uh, and I'd like to invite you to sort of uh, highlight your 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 main word, your your main keywords, three words maximum uh, that you would like to see emphasized in that uh, in that conference. So I invite you to contribute to this little word cloud. And I'm again just giving a a very few moments, transformation, I think very high up, action very high up, sustainability, social justice, transformation, action, very, very high up. Okay, and for our very last round, um, uh, uh, while while some people are still sort of putting uh, putting their input uh, in here, I'm going to go around the panel again. Um, uh, but really, uh, for this last round, also in the interest of time, really invite you just very briefly uh, to to mention what would be what would be your main issue or your main keyword or your main uh, you know three keywords maybe that you would like to see addressed in this big global meeting where we hope to bring together really many many parts of the education sector. Uh, including uh, really a, a large number of, uh, of, of ministers. So what would be your key things you, that you want, would want to uh, have addressed? And I'm going to uh, start with, with Kathleen. What would be your main, main issue that you want to get out, the, out of the conference? Okay, well, for me, it was really um, transformative change and participatory action. Um, but I would be doing my colleagues a, a great disservice in education if I didn't mention, and this is very important, teachers around the world are exhausted. Bringing new ideas to educators right now is going to be a very intense challenge for everyone. Right. We have been... Okay. Very, very, very with, brief, Kathleen, because real time is yeah. running. So, so basically, yeah, I think teacher, teachers is a remember, very important. Remember that we are all for participatory action and transformative change, but we are exhausted. We need renewal. Right. Great, great, Kathleen. Very briefly, Isaac, your, your main point to get out of the conference. Okay, thank you. So uh, I would like to, maybe the main key was to be educated to transform. Because even from the a quote from one of our African leaders, it says that education is the most powerful weapon which can which you can use to change the world. Because we want this education so that we get to change the way we think and work towards a sustainable future. We need to be responsible actors who are going to resolve challenges in our communities and also contribute positively towards creating a more sustainable world. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Isaac. Mena, please. My like keyword is ecofeminism. It would be really great and knowledgeable if we can include organized sessions or talks on how and why we need to adopt the concept of ecofeminism now more than ever as a major factor for achieving the 17 goals of Agenda 2030. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, Zaituni? Well, we can only achieve this transformation if we change our mindset. So behavior change is critical by everyone. Great, thank you. And um, Christian? Yeah, definitely transformation. I mean, uh, education is the key, is a powerful tool for transformation, for good or for bad. So we need to, I would like to see that in this, um, in this conference. You know, I think that it's very important that people understand how important really education is. And our governments or, or decision makers have to take it very seriously because this pandemic has shown that the, the huge gap that there is here in, in the countries regarding to education. Some children can't even share one cell phone for 10 children to attend to their classes. So I think uh, we need to work, we need to improve that. 
Okay, great. Thank, thank, thank you very much, uh, Christian. Thanks very much to everyone. I'm already th saying thank you to the to the wonderful panel, really, and your very, very focused and rich uh, interventions. And I say thank you to all the participants for their active contribution. Also in the in the in the in the poll, we didn't have much time for a, for a. Uh, to pick up uh, questions from the from 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 the chat, but we will do our best to respond uh, uh, respond uh, uh, online. Um, for the World Conference, of course, as I mentioned, uh, we had uh, two big partners: uh, the the German Ministry of Education and um, uh, Research and the German National Commission for for UNESCO. Um, and these two partners are uh, are doing our closing and our way forward uh, now. And I would first like to invite the Secretary General of the German. Commission for UNESCO, uh, Mr. Roman Luxschreiter, uh, to uh, to review uh, the workshop series so far and and and, and draw some conclusions for, for, with regard to where we are now. Uh, Mr. Luxschreiter, uh, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Leicht. Um, dear colleagues and speakers, dear participants, uh, I'm delighted to be with you today for this last online workshop. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank UNESCO and the Federal Ministry of Education uh, once again for the very successful collaboration in the preparation of the World Conference on ESD. Um, as we have heard today, despite uh, of the challenges, we have been able to experiment with new formats and successfully create spaces to exchange about transformative education. Today's uh, workshop with uh, this participatory uh, elements um, are a great example for this uh, development. At the German Commission for UNESCO, we are committed to continue our engagement on ESD and the Agenda 2030. We will continue to strengthen partnerships and explore synergies across existing UNESCO networks to reinforce our collective efforts to promote ESD. We are actively contributing to that goal by organizing sessions on ESD in the context of UNESCO sites at the World Conference, for example, with our colleagues from the National Commission of South Korea. When we started this online series, we said that it is on us to use this historic moment to strengthen our messages around ESD. Now that we come to the end of it, I believe we can confidently say we are moving in the right direction. I want to highlight a few results of the survey we asked you to complete before this final workshop. We can see that we truly reach people from all over the world and from different age groups and particularly teachers and educators. We ask you to describe in one word what ESD means to you. And you can see that future, hope, and self-reflection, as well as agency, stick out for it, for you. We also wanted to know how you would describe the workshop series. And we can see that inspiring, informative, and relevant came up regularly. Looking into the future, you also highlighted that you would want ESD to continue the conservation, conversation around structural change and supporting educators and youth but also to further engage on topics related to diversity and inclusion. This online workshop series is one of the exciting new formats I mentioned earlier. In order to preserve this series and provide us all with an insightful wrap up, we are happy to share the illustration Ms. Anja Riese has been working on over the past hour with you now. Quite a challenging task. It has been both impressive and motivating to see the high level of engagement from all across the world. Distinguished panelists helped us reflect on the interconnectedness of planetary and human health, climate change, and sustainable lifestyles. We heard from teachers, academics, civil society, and young people, and learned about best practice examples around youth engagement, resilience, and digital and remote learning. And I find that this outcome is really fascinating. Thank you so much to Anja Riese. We are still overwhelmed with the response and grateful for all of you who engaged with us. And we are delighted to have you all today participate and help us reflect on the overall series. Over 15,000 people joined our dialogues over the past eight months, and we look forward to continue to learn and grow together. I would like to invite you again to join the LinkedIn group Ms. Jensen mentioned earlier to continue this dialogue and to engage and exchange with us and with each other. Last but not least, let me invite you all to take a look at the video series highlighting examples from the German ESD awards that we produced together with the federal ministry. The series highlights examples around the three key thematic areas of ESD for 2030, transformative action, structural change, and technological 
future. Both this workshop and the video series are examples of new formats for knowledge exchange and collaboration, and we look forward to use these types of communication tools further for the successful implementation of ESD for 2030. Thank you so much for your attention. Great, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Lukscheiter, for your for your remarks and and also uh, for co-organizing this whole workshop series and and also for sharing this uh, uh, this one wonderful summary uh, uh, drawn summary from from the discussion uh, today. Uh, I'd like to uh, hand over to Andrea Reuter Petzneck, the head of division uh, of Education for Sustainable Development in the Federal Ministry of Education and Research uh, of Germany, and it's really thanks to the ministry that we are able to organize this uh, this conference. In the, in the first place, we would have loved to go uh, to Berlin, but, but uh, the ministry is a very, very close uh, partner, really, on a daily basis, uh, even in this remote uh, setting. So, Ms. Reuter Petzneck, over to you. Thank you, Alexander. And hello, everybody from Berlin. I'm happy to be with you today. The discussions uh, today and during the whole workshop series showed that there are many activities worldwide to implement education for sustainable development. I hope that our discussions provide inspiration for more actions for ESD to come. As stated out in the beginning of this workshop, the time to act is now. The German gov federal government is already very much uh, committed to ESD and so are many people in Germany. We have a big ESD community here. Our sustainability strategy emphasizes that ESD should be anchored in all areas of education. And our national action plan on ESD describes the way in which we will bring this vision into action, together with the relevant stakeholders of Germany's education system. For us, the implementation of UNESCO's program ESD for 2030 is therefore of great importance. This is the reason why Germany will host the launch conference of this program, together with UNESCO and supported by the German Commission for UNESCO as advisory partner. The World Conference, as you know, will take place next month from 17th to 19th May in a digital way transmitted from Berlin. We are sure it will be a highly important milestone on the way to implement ESD for 2030 worldwide. And we are already working very hard to make it a successful and memorable event together with uh, UNESCO and the uh, German Commission for UNESCO. I would like to inform you that in the preparation for the conference, we have launched a call for action for ESD within the European Union during our EU Council presidency last year. The EU member states were invited to send us descriptions of their actions or practices on behalf of ESD, and many of them did so. We are now preparing a compilation of the contributions that we received and they show a strong and diversified commitment to the new UNESCO program from policy, from policy strategies to curriculum modifications. I'm not going to re reveal any more of this uh, to you now. We will present the compilation at the conference. We hope that we will also adopt a strong Berlin declaration that will push the implementation of ESD for 2030 in the next years. Therefore, instead of saying uh, the time to act is now or never, I would rather say it is now and forever. We need to embark on a continuous way together for the transformation of our education systems towards more sustainability. It is definitely necessary. Thank you very much. Great, thank you very much, uh, Andrea, for these uh, for these uh, uh, re remarks and, and and for the support. Uh, with this, we come to the end of today's workshop and also uh, to the end of the whole workshop series that we have been organizing since last year in uh, on ESD uh, for the world beyond uh, COVID nineteen. Uh, the recording of this workshop and also for the other workshops is available on UNESCO's YouTube channel in English, uh, French, uh, and uh, German. Uh, the su a summary of every workshop is also available on our website. Uh, we also invite you to, uh, to, uh, to join the LinkedIn group that has been mentioned a couple of times um, already. And then more information about the World Conference, the preparations, uh, the program uh, is of course available on the conference uh, uh, website. Um, and on the UNESCO's uh, general ESD uh, website. Uh, with this, again, thanks to all the panelists, thanks to all the co-organizers and partners. Uh, I wish you a good day and goodbye. <laughs>